By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Highlander 9394 online event and we have reached the semi-finals. And in the semi-finals, we're going to watch two blue and red decks go face to face. We have Roman with his blue red good stuff deck taking on Yoon Erik with his blue red surprises deck. Now, obviously there are a lot of similarities here between the decks, but also some differences more about that later in the video in the deck deck section. I would first like to point out that we are playing this format according to some specific rules. Here you can see a slide about those rules. So we have got 10 points that you can spend on cards with points on them. And here you can see how we divided those points. And also, of course, this is Highlander 9394, meaning you can only play with sets printed in that era of magic. And you can see those sets logos there on the left top corner. So those are the sets that you're allowed to uh, to choose cards from. Um, if you'd like to know more about this format, I would uh, suggest to check out the description below because there you will find more information about the rules and also a link to the uh, tournament website with uh, all the decks photo photos that I could collect and also the results of this event. Um, and also in that same description below, by the way, as always, you can also find uh, timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. I know that some people prefer to go straight to the games. Check out the rest of the video after that. So that's the easiest way to do that. And here we are going to continue with uh, the deck text. I think I'm gonna start with the deck of Roman, blue, red, good stuff. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Roman. So it's blue, red, good stuff. And basically good stuff refers to the, you know, the best cards from those colors. And when I'm looking at this list, I kind of agree on that. There's just a lot of really sensible, obvious choices being made here. You know, you're playing with blue, so you play control magic, you play your counter magic. You've got Surrender Befreed, which is great. You're playing with Mahamoti Jin, you know, those flyers. Creatures in general are quite good in Singleton because you have less answers for them. And especially in this format where you have a hundred card format, right? So there's one source of plowshares somewhere in your deck, you know, try, try to find that, right? So in general, uh, creatures are good, especially creatures with evasion. So that's also why we're seeing a lot of flyers here. You know, Shivan Dragon, Granite Gargoyle, Rock of Courage, just talking about some of the red creatures here. Also an Atok in this deck, that makes sense. There are a lot of artifact creatures in the deck. There are, you know, there are some nice synergies here, for example, for example, Tetravis with Atok could work quite well. You know, take the counters off, feed them to the to the Atok. That's pretty sweet. Um, I think the steel cards are always quite good in this format. Again, you only have one answer to each of these uh, enchant uh, artifacts or enchant creatures. You know, we see a steel artifact, we see a control magic. So those could be game deciders as well. I mean, this is just looking like a really strong deck and I'm not su uh, surprised that it made it all the way here to the semifinals. I mean, this is gonna be a tough one for Yoon Edic to beat because even though Yoon Edic is also playing the same color combination, this deck seems a little bit meaner, a little bit leaner, like they're not any, um, you know, fun cards in here. It's, it's, it's a lot of business. Although there are, because you're playing Singleton, there are still some cool cards that you don't see very often in old school. Think, for example, about a card like Brassman, but also a card like River Merfolk, which is quite good, you know, because it's got, it's got Mountain Walk. Um, if you have Lord of Atlantis, which is not in this deck, but then you can give it Island Walk and Mountain Walk together. I always kind of like that idea. Love the art as well, by the way, of this card. So, I mean, you know, there are some fun cards that you just don't see uh, every day and still there are really good in the singleton format and i think that's quite nice about you know formats like seven point singleton or a hundred card singleton format like this is that you know you can play cards that you don't see often but that they're still really good um a card that catches my eye here as well by the way is the rocket launcher so rocket launcher a card for four uh, originally from the antiquities and when it comes to play you cannot use it yet so it, it kind of has summoning sickness but after that you can use it whenever you want and you can pay two uh, and then you can deal one damage to any target. And at the end of the uh, next, uh, beginning of the end step, it's destroyed. So you basically pay two to deal the damage and you can do this often as you want. Now, the reason I'm discussing this card is that normally when you're already playing red, you're not gonna play a card like this because you've already have Fireball, you've got your Disintegrate, you know, you've got your direct damage. All those cards are in here, by the way. But, you know, he's chosen to add like an extra direct damage card. And that kind of shows how good these direct damage cards are in this uh, in this singleton format. So overall, this is just looking like a very solid and strong deck. Um, and yeah, let's take a look at Jun Edic's deck and, uh, and see what he can do against this uh, good stuff built by a Roman. Let's go to the deck of Jun Edic. And here we see the deck of Jun Edic. So it's red and it's blue. And I mean, 
it's just a really good color combination, isn't it? I'm not surprised to see this color combination doing so well. If we're looking at the red and the blue section, we just see a lot of, you know, obvious includes. Of course, you're going to play with the big flyers right there. They can be game deciding, Shivan Dragon, Mamoti Jin. But also, the nice thing about red and blue, both colors, they've got some more flyers that are a little bit cheaper to cast, like Rock of Courageous, Phantom Monster. Uh, we're seeing Granite Gargoyle. We see Azur Drake. Uh, we're seeing a Vesuvan Doubleganger and a clone. They can be basically extra flyers. And flying is just really good evasion in 100-card singleton. I think creatures in general are a little bit better in 100-card singleton because your answers, you know, if you're looking for that one answer to your creature threat, there's only one in a 100-card deck. Uh, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, I think the most interesting part of Yun Edix deck is actually the artifact section. I'm seeing a lot of cool artifacts. Like, my eyes are immediately drawn to the Aladdin's Lamp and the Aladdin's Ring. I think it's super cool that Yun Edic is playing both of those in his deck. And the nice thing is he's playing Power Artifact and Basil Monolith, right? So he can make unlimited amounts of mana if he gets that combo to go. And he's also playing with Transmute Artifact. So that makes it a little bit easier to find, you know, maybe his Basil Monolith when he already has a Power Artifact in hand, you know? And when that happens, I'm hoping that he's not going to use it for a Fireball of a million points or for a Brain Geyser to kind of deck his opponent. I'm hoping that he will use it to cast his Aladdin's Lamp and use his Aladdin's Lamp. Like, that would just be hilarious. I'm hoping for that. Uh, besides, these artifacts are also some more interesting artifacts I find in his list. We've got Gauntlet of Chaos, which is really cool. Five to cast, five and tap, and you can exchange permanence. It's just, I love the art as well, and I think it's a super cool card. Again, a card you don't see often. I've sometimes played it in multiplayer EDH, and it's been quite fun. But, like... Uh, between two players in a format like this, it's usually too slow. But, I mean, it would be great to kind of see it work. I also uh, love to see Jandor Saddlebags in here that can, of course, untap a creature, which is quite nice. Uh, I remember Yun Edic used it early in the tournament to kind of give his Mahamoti Jin vigilance, and that made it really difficult for the opponent to kind of get through with his forces. Uh, we'll also see a card like Time Vault in combination with Twiddle. So, you know, there are some... The deck is called, of course, Surprises for a reason. There are some, there are some surprises in this deck, but there are also just a lot of good good cards in this deck. And I would also like to mention, again, the Blue Elemental Blast in Yun Edic's list. I mean, that's quite good and that's quite smart because I do think that red is one of the stronger colors in these formats, right in the singleton format, because you have access to that burn. And that Blue Elemental Blast can be an absolute lifesaver against uh, getting uh, killed by a burn spell. So it makes sense that he's playing that main. Okay, this is the list of Yoon Edic. We've looked at the list of the opponent of Yoon. That means we are ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. Yoon Edic on the left with blue and red surprises, taking on Roman, who's on the play here, also playing blue and red. And he's called his deck good stuff, so that kind of says enough, doesn't it? All the good cards on blue and red. And then uh, Yoon Edic basically did the same. A few more surprises in his deck, though, hence the name Surprises. Second blue here being played out by Roman, who's passing the turn. Seems to be some glitches on the line here on the side of Yoon Edic. Hopefully that'll improve later on in the, in the game. It looked for a moment there that he was passing. Does that mean that he's missing a land drop here, another glitch? But I think he's still taking his turn. And hopefully his connection will improve. Does he have a land? That's the big question. Yep, there's the second blue. So two islands up for Roman. Also two, uh, so, sorry, Yun Edic. Also two islands up for Roman. So both players can counter. Now do remember, this is of course a 100 card singleton format. So despite the fact that both players are playing counter spell, power sync, spell blast, I believe. I mean, they're just three cards in a 100 card deck. So I would be tempted here exactly to just play out your stuff, try to put some pressure on. This is a pretty good uh, play here by uh, Yun Edic. Playing the mountain and then uh, playing the granite gargoyle 2-2 two -two flyer. And for one red, you can give it plus zero, plus one. Let's see if Roman has an answer to this. He does play with, for example, Wall of Air. So that would have been a nice uh, drop here for Roman. It looks like he's just passing the turn, missing a land drop. Yun Edic here playing land number four. There's the attack, of course. So Roman dropping here to 18. And there's just the pass. Okay, so both players kind of taking it easy. And of course, that's good for Yun Edic here because he's the one who's got a threat on the board. Look at this, Roman passing again. So that's his second turn that he's doing nothing. Again, Yun Edic finding another land. So he's got five mana now available. 
could start casting a card like Water Elemental that's in this deck that would be quite disastrous for Roman. Roman here finding a Maze of If. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good top deck for him. That'll, uh, you know, that'll stop the uh, Granite Gargoyle here, at least. Let's see if Yun Eda can do anything against it. So a very, um, you know, relaxing start here of the match. Both players not doing a, a lot. I mean, a little advantage here, of course, for Yun Eric finding uh, the lands he needs. So six cards in hand here, by the way, for Yun Eric passing the turn. Another land here found by Roman, but again an island, so he cannot cast like half of his deck. Four mana now available for blue. Tapping all four. There's an icy manipulator. That's pretty good. Are we going to see counter magic here from Yun Eric? Nope, we're not. Yun taking his turn. Now, of course, I think both players are playing with Steel Artifacts. So that would be another good card. Here we go. There's the Steel Artifact. Really useful because he can use it to tap down here the Maze of If. So he can use the uh, Icy to tap the Maze and uh, hit him for two. That would be my line of play, I think. You can also consider passing and do it, doing it on end step every time of your opponent. Exactly. Tapping it right now, attacking for two, putting Roman on 14 here. So Roman has still already taken six points of damage from that one gargoyle. Finding another island. So he's really unfortunate here. Maybe his hand is full of red cards. Who knows? Cannot play them out. Cannot find a single mountain thus far. Tapping five. What are we going to see? Okay, there's an air elemental. That's pretty good. That air elemental is a great blocker for, of course, the... Uh, the Granite Gargoyle, and now Yun has to make a choice next turn what to do with the Icy. Probably going to keep it on tap to deal with the, uh, with the Air Elemental. Drawing his card for turn here. And I believe Roman's version here is a uh, foreign black bordered one. Nice coloring on those cards. Tapping for, oh, there's his Icy Manipulator. Wow, so now he's got two Icy's. That feels really unfair, you know, to have a card double in a singleton format. There's a pass turn. So now Yun can start dealing some damage again on Ensep. He can tap down, for example, the, uh, the Air Elemental or the Maze, of course. Probably going to go for the Air Elemental. And then next turn he can tap down the Maze and uh, swing in for two. Let's first see if Roman can do anything. Tapping four here. What are we going to see? Oh, there's a Jam Day Tome. That is big. You know, that Tome can make a difference. And all the more reason for Yun Eric to, to play quite aggressively. Tapping down the air elemental here. And then taking on his turn. I mean, life is pretty sweet with two icy manipulators. I can tell you that from experience. I mean, if he can find a copy artifact, he can make it really ugly. Then again, I guess you would copy the Jam Day Tome instead of another icy. Anyway, he's first attacking with the gargoyle, putting Roman here on 12. Passing the turn. And I mean, the good news for Roman here is that despite all of the stumbles with mana, remember, he just passed two turns in a row, couldn't do anything, not play a land, not do anything. Um, despite that, Roman still has a chance here. I mean, he's got the book, he can draw extra cards. If he can find another, like, potential blocker for the Gargoyle, he's all good, like a Wall of Air, for example. That would be quite nice for him. If he can find Control Magic or Steel Artifact, those cards would be great. So, you know, there's a, there, there are a lot of options here. Tapping four. What are we going to see? Untapping again, though. Yep, control magic. So this is one of those cards that can make uh, a big change. It looks like uh, Yun Eric wants to do something, picking up his cards. Are we going to see counter magic here by Yun Eric? Let's see. Tapping of the fingers. He's thinking about it. Ooh, there's a lightning bolt on his own. Gargoyle, and this is actually great for Roman, right? Because it's costing Yun two cards, and he's losing his creature. Like, that is uh, super good news here for Roman. And I can understand that Yun Eric needed a moment to think about it, but probably a good decision here. And, and, and the thing here for, for Yun Eric, the hard thing here is that Roman also has that book. So despite the fact that Yun has two IC players on board and a lot of mana, he's not really able to capitalize it. Going through his hand here is, uh, unfortunately, his side is still a bit glitchy. 
So making it uh, a little bit difficult to commentate on, but we'll see. Tapping the fingers again. What is he going to do here? Really in the tank. Remember, this is, of course, the semifinals. The winner will continue to the finals of the uh, Highlander event here, this online event. 46 Wizards started this tournament. Only four remain. Oh, look at this. Going to pitch the twiddle. Getting back the uh, Granite Gargoyle. I'm liking this. I think, you know, if, if, if I'm trying to get into the thoughts of, of Yoon Edek, you know, trying to, to get into his skull, you can say, I think what he wants to do here is play very aggressively because he realizes every turn that I'm just going to pass and do nothing, it means that Roman is going to draw an extra card with the Gem Datome. So I really want to try to, to get him as low as I can right now. Ooh, Roman here finding the Hammerheim. That means red mana for him. What can he do? And now it's his turn to be in the tank. A great card here for Roman, for example, would be a, a shatter on one of those two. Uh, okay, this is also great, actually. Chain Lightning taking care of the Gargoyle. Really good. I wanted to say a shatter would be really helpful. And now there's the attack with the Air Elemental because um, Yun Itik had to tap out to play the Recall and the Gargoyle in the same turn. We also see a River Merfolk. River Merfolk really good in this matchup because it has Mountain Walk. So it's unblockable here for Yun. Now remember, Yun still has the two Icy's, but now all of a sudden he's a bit on the, uh, on the back foot. He's got to start using his Icy's defensively instead of offensively. He really needs to find some, uh, some good cards here. He's got six lands. He's got red mana, he's got blue mana, should be able to do something. Really wonder what type of cards are in his hand at the moment. Tapping four, there's a Dragon Whelp. Okay, that's quite good. A 2-3 flyer and you can pump it for one red plus one plus. Oh, cannot do it more than three times or else the uh, Dragon Whelp dies at the end of the turn. This could be useful here for Yoon. Still has mana open to use the Icy as well. So could consider here going to tap the... Um, Air Elemental and the Maze and take two from the River Merfolk so that next turn he can swing in with the Whelp. That's one of the choices that he has. It's going to be interesting to see what he's going to do when uh, Roman wants to declare his uh, combat here. Roman also seems to be in the tank. For him, of course, you know, when you have an active Gem de Tome on the, on the board, you have to think, okay, if I play something out that's going to be more than two mana in this case, then he can no longer use his Gem de Tome. So he's constantly probably thinking, is it worth it to play this out or is it better to just draw a card with the Gem de Tome? I think in his case, in most cases, actually, you first want to go into combat, see what Yoon's going to do with those IC Manipulators. And then kind of continue, okay, what do I want now want to do? Do I want to use my book or do I want to play something out? So Yoon's still in the tank here. I believe he's got three cards in hand because we can see that one uh, white dice there on the chain lightning indicating a three. So perhaps he's got three cards in hand, four cards in hand for Yoon Edek. Yoon Edek on 16, Roman on 12. Game number one of the semifinals of the 93-94 Highlander event. If you'd like to know more about this event, by the way, check out the description below. There's a link to the uh, website where you can find more information. Also, a lot of deck lists there. So if you want to get inspired, check it out. A lot of deck photos, I should say. And Roman going through his hand again, trying to figure out what the best way of play is here. Yeah, wants to attack, so um, wants to go into combat in response, Yoon Edek tapping both creatures. And then I wonder if next turn Yoon Edek is going to tap down the maze and try to swing in for four. Now Yoon Edek probably going into the second main, trying to decide what he wants to do. Okay, he's going to tap four here. Okay, he's going to use the book main. Trying to find answers. Hasn't played out a land yet, I believe, this turn. Oh, Transmute Artifact. Ooh, interesting. Both players playing with Transmute Artifact, by the way. I think that card's really good in this singleton format. 
Any way to tutor is quite good, I guess. It is hard to splash a color or else I'm sure a lot of players would have splashed black for the demonic tutor. I really wonder what he's going to look up here with the transmute artifact. So transmute artifact, a card from antiquities, sacrifice target artifact and then go through your library to pick another artifact, put it directly into play. And uh, you can find uh, an artifact that has the same casting cost as, as the artifact you're sacrificing or less. If it has a higher casting cost, you've got to pay the extra mana. Right, so for example, if you want to look up a Gauntlet of Chaos in this case, then you've got to pay one more. Ooh, he's going to go for a disc. I guess that makes sense. I mean, if, if I would be Unetic, I wouldn't actually be that devastated, you know, because of the disc. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong. Um, and it's a way to get rid of the two Ices and the Whelp, right? So it's not too, too bad. Um, and you're going to keep the Maze, of course, because it doesn't take the Islands, uh, the lands with it. Um, but then on the other hand, if you're you and you're like, okay, I can swing in with the well, hit you for four, put you on eight. And I can kind of, you know, keep my, um, keep my cards in hand and pass turn here. And if you want to use the disc, use the disc. Because of course, you know, Roman also has got two really good creatures on the board as well that he's going to destroy. And he had to lose the, uh, the jam they told him. Now this is also quite good here from Roman. Playing out that Mishra's Factory. Mishra's Factory and Disc, of course, a very good combination because with the Factory, like I said, you don't destroy the land, so, so Roman gets to keep the, uh, the man land and then he can attack with it afterwards. So this is pretty tough here, I guess, for Yoon, you know? Although, in a way, it's kind of easy as well. Just tap down the maze, attack for four. Or do you want to keep the Dragon Whelp as a blocker to kind of force Roman to first pop the Disc? That's another thing you can do. I would personally be very tempted to put him on A tier. But then again, it does mean, because you're using your IC, it does mean that on the crackback, you're going to take two extra points of damage from the River Merfolk. Then again, you know, if he's going to animate the factory attack with the factory, hit you back for four. I mean, does he really want to do that? Because then he cannot use his, uh, his disc. Or, well, if he does, he destroys his own factory. So it's, it's an interesting situation here. So Yun Edic tapping down the maze, I think he's going to go for, uh, for the attack with the Whelp here. Because why else would you tap down the maze? Then he can put his two mountains in it, put uh, Roman on eight. Or does he have better options? Like, his, well, he already played a Steel Artifact. I wanted to say a Steel Artifact would be devastating here, but he already played out his Steel Artifact, of course, on the Icy, icy earlier in the game. Uh. Yeah, so really tapping down the maze here. In the tank, what is he going to do? We will just have to wait and see. Is he going to turn the Dragon Whelp sideways? And if so, is he going to pump it up as well? Look at this, going to do something else. Tapping three mana. What is he going to do? Oh, there's a living artifact. That is so cool. So he's going to swing in here. Oh, I love this play. Living artifact on the icy manipulator. What living artifact does, it it, it makes a non-artifact creature into an artifact creature equal to the amount uh, of casting cost is equal to its power and toughness. So icy is 40 cast, meaning it turns into a 4-4. Look at this, dealing 8 points of damage. No, 7 points of damage to Roman. So Roman dropping here all the way to uh, to 5. Wow, he was on 12, now he's on 5. That's pretty problematic here for Roman. Wow, that was unexpected. I understand that uh, Yunaid really needed a moment here to make that decision because, of course, you are going to lose your, uh, your card as well to that disc. Let's see if Roman uh, does the disc activation straight away. That could make the most sense. Pop the disc, destroy everything on board, and uh, after... The disc has resolved, animate your Mishra's Factory attack for two. But I mean, for Roman, this is not ideal, right? Because you know you're playing against a deck with Red Burn. You're on five. That means a top deck Fireball could be game deciding. So it's tough here. So Roman really in the tank now, trying to decide, am I going to pop the disc now or not? He could, of course, attack for six first. Uh, put Yunitic on 10, then pop the disc. Another line of play could be animate the Mitra's Factory, attack for 8, passing the turn, pop the disc in the turn of Yunitic. 
Um, the downside, I guess, of that scenario is that you either can still swing in and then you probably have to pop the disc on on the combat side of Yun-Irik, meaning he has a second main phase to start casting stuff again. There's the attack for six. Yeah, I think he's gonna first attack for six, then use the disc. That would make the most sense. So Yun-Irik taking the damage here. So he's on 10. And now he's gonna pop the disc. Yeah, I think, I think this is the most sensible thing to do. Of course, it all depends on what cards... Um, you know, Roman has in hand tapping six. What are we gonna see for six? Are we gonna see Ma Moti Jin? Oh, a trike also quite good for Fortress Killing hitting the board. Now, remember, Yun Erik is also not that high up on life, he's on 10, meaning next turn he could take a hit for six. And then, if Roman takes off the counters, Yun Erik will be on one, right? So, this is really difficult. Oh, copy artifact on the trike and the chain lightning. Oh, and then he wins, of course! Chain Lightning on Roman's life total, putting him on two, and then he's got the counters from the Triskelion here. Wow, winning it here in game one, out of nowhere, because of that Triskelion being played out by Roman. That is pretty explosive. Wow, 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 wow. I guess one of the things that Roman could have done is, um, I guess in response to the cast of the copy, he could have dealt two damage to Yun Inic and killed his own trike. But I can also understand that he didn't want to do that. And that's also why it was a really good decision by Yun Erik to first play the copy artifact and after it resolved, then play the chain lightning. Because if, if he would first play the chain lightning, Roman, of course, would have definitely killed his own trike when he saw that copy artifact coming in. Because he had to, or else he would die. So, uh, yeah, that was a good line of play by Yun Erik. Also, earlier, you know, in that final attack, deciding to go for that... Uh, um, animate artifact play, right? C making his icy manipulator into a 4 4 and swinging in with it as well. All these things really mattered and gave you the victory in game number one. Now, remember, this is a best of three, so both players are shuffling up here, and we're gonna go to game number two. Game number two, here we go. So, Roman on the play. Look at this turn one brass man. What more can you want in life? Turn one brass man, loving it. One three card, originally from Arabian Nights. Really sweet to see it in action here. Passing the turn. Roman playing out a Tolaria. Attacking, of course, for one. So, uh, Yun Edic dropping here to 19. There's the pass. The thing is, with the Brassman, you have to pay one generic mana to untap it again. So, that is a little bit annoying. Second uh, mountain here for Yun. So, Yun only finding mountains and uh, Roman only finding islands once again. That was in uh, the same case in game one. Look at this. Leaving the uh, Brassman tapped. Kind of signaling that he's got better options. He does. He now can play out a Yoshin Soldier. A 1-4 uh, creature with Vigilance. So, it doesn't tap when it attacks. Pretty good creature. You know, that 4 uh, toughness makes it quite good as a blocker. And if need be, you can attack with it as well. And because it's got that Vigilance, you can still use it as a blocker also. Yun Erik here passing the turn again. Finding another mountain. So I wonder if Roman here is going to untap the uh, Brass Man. He's got to decide that in his upkeep before he draws. And yep, yeah, he's going to untap the Brass Man. So he can attack for two here. He would put Yun on 17. There's the attack for two. Let's see if Yoon can do anything. Nope, it's gonna drop to 17. Are we gonna see a land drop here by Roman or just a pass? That's a question here. It looks like it's just gonna be a pass. And that would be good news here for Yoon. Oh, but look at this. It looks like we're already a turn Ahead, I mean, there are some glitches on the line. It looks like Yun Edic also did nothing in his turn. So there's another attack for two. So both players missing land drops here. Looks like Yun is going to pick up his cards. Can he do anything against this attack? Already dropped here to 15. Perhaps it was already a pass here by Roman. But I don't think I've seen Yun already picking up uh, a card for turn. We're just gonna wait and see here. Oh, he's gonna he's got a discard. That is tough. So discarding a Sage of Latinam. Ah, oh, this is really rough here for Yoon. So not finding any lands, or at least not the color the lands type of lands he needs. That's what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, an attack again for two. So Yoon gonna drop probably here to 13, exactly. 
Ooh, finally finding an island from the top. So this could be a game changer here. What can he do with that blue mana? What are we going to see? There's an Azur Drake. Counter spell though on the Drake. That's unfortunate here for Yoon. That means that next turn Roman can attack, uh, can again attack here with his artifact army already put Jun on 13. Is he going to untap the uh, brass man here? Could put Jun on 11. He is. And of course Roman also not drawing great. You know, he's not finding the mountains. He's missing a lot of land drops. But it doesn't matter, you know, as long as Yoon is also stumbling and you can kind of counter away the threats. Yoon here untapping again. Let's see if he can find another... Uh, Good card. Ooh, another island from the top. This opens up a lot of possibilities in Yoon Edix deck. Are we going to see, for example, an air elemental here? That would be a, a pretty big deal. Tapping five. Again, a lot of glitching. Okay, there's a Vesuvan. Probably going to choose the Yoshin Soldier. So that means he now has a 1-4 Vigilance as well, which is perfect. He can block both creatures with it. What's not so perfect is that they both survive the block. Ooh, he's going to leave the Brass Man tapped. Does that mean that he's got a plan? Can he do something with the three blue mana? I wonder if he's playing Psionic Blast. I can't remember because Psionic Blast would be great or he could kill the Vesuvan and attack for one. Tapping three. Yep, there's the Psionic Blast. I thought so. So this is ideal. Of course, you and Edic tapped out as well. Does mean Roman dropping to 18 from his own blast, but he can also attack for one here to Yoon Edic. Yoon here dropping to 10. So his life total is halved right now. And okay, there's a Brain Geyser. Oh, and quite a cool altar that he's showing here to Roman. And he's going to draw three cards off of the Brain Geyser. Finding an island as one of the cards. And passing the turn here, seven in hand. I mean, this could be quite exciting, right? Because Roman can, of course, attack, hit him for two. I guess he's leaving the brass man tap, so hitting him for one, putting him on nine. And then next turn, Yoon is going to untap. He's got six mana. He's got a, a handful of spells, right? Ooh, old man of the sea. That is quite interesting. A two, three creature, and you can tap, and you can take control of target creature that has a... Equal power or less than the Old Man of the Sea. So it's perfect to steal those 1-1 one, one, and 2-2s two, of your uh, opponent. Let's see what Jun Ede can do. You're finding another land. So three mountains, four islands, seven mana in total, and a grip full of cards, a handful of cards. You would expect him here to play out something powerful. Ooh, an earthquake. That is something powerful. Killing all the creatures with one spell. Wow. That is awesome for Yoon Edic. The only downside, of course, for him is that he's also hurting himself. He's going to drop to 5. Roman going to drop to 14. Remember, this is game number 2. Roman has lost the first game, has to win this one. Finding a mountain from the top here, so that's quite nice for him. You know, Yoon Edic already on 5, so he is quite close to victory. Can he win this one? And then are we going to go to a game number 3? Or is Yoon Edic going to stabilize and, uh, and win this? And make it a 2-0 and advance to the finals. That's the question here. Okay, there's a Suchi. Are we going to see a counter spell? Looks like we are. Yep, there's the counter spell. Suchi being countered. And it looks like it's a pass now. And uh, Roman, of course, tapped out. There's a strip mine stripping away the mountain, probably. That is very unfortunate here for Roman losing that mountain. Tapping three. What are we going to see? Oh, tapping four. There's an Icy Manipulator, so you could tap down one of the lands, probably in the uh, upkeep. And that's exactly what he does. Tapping down the Tolaria, passing, uh, allowing Roman to continue, I mean, to his uh, draw step. Drawing a card for turn. And this is tough for Roman, eh? He's so unlucky with mana. Okay, there's a copy artifact here, copying the uh, Icy Manipulator. So it looks like we're going to have another icy battle. So Roman untapping here. He is on five. Oh, sorry, Yoon Edic untapping here. He is on five. Roman on 14. There's a volcanic island hitting the board. 
Again, lots of lands for Yun'Irik, which is always dangerous, you know, because uh, if you're Roman, you're thinking, oh, more and more lands. What if he can find some more expels? I could be toast here. Luckily for Roman, he's still on 14. And it looks like Yun'Irik is now asking, what do you have in your graveyard? Maybe wanting to know if you already played out his uh, counter magic and how many. It's quite relevant here. So both players already played out a counter spell. And also, uh, Roman already played out his uh, Psionic Blast, and, and Yun Eric, of course, played out his uh, Earthquake. That Earthquake was huge. That was one of the best cards that Yun Eric could have played in that situation, killing three creatures on the side of Roman and zero of his own. That was just perfect. Let's see what he can do. Tapping two blue, it seems. Ooh, Transmute Artifact. Is he really going to do that? That is interesting. What is he going to look up here? Could it be that he maybe has a power artifact in hand? Going to go for Basil Monolith, play power artifact, and then maybe has a fireball in hand. That would give him an instant win. That would be quite insane. So we saw a transmute artifact in, um, in game one, and now we're seeing it in game two as well. Really nice to see this card being played so often. I have two copies myself and really want to kind of build a toolbox deck around it. I haven't done it yet. And Yun Erik, he really uh, in the tank, of course, having this 100 card singleton deck. Oh, he's looking up the hive. Oh, I'm liking this. That is such a janky card to look up. I think it's really cool. I mean, he's got the mana for it. Why not? And he can start making tokens. So the Hive, um, I believe it's 5 to cast, 5 and tap to use, and it makes a 1-1 one, one Wasp token. So that's pretty sweet. And he's got 5 open now exactly, so on the end step of Roman, he can start making a 1-1 one, one Flyers. It is a very spicy choice here for Yoon. I mean, part of me expected him to go for a Jam Day Tome, and he kind of used that just to, to outdraw Roman. But uh, I like this. I think this is a much cooler uh, choice. If it's a better choice, I will leave that up to you as a listener. Let me know in the comments below. But I do like it. I like it a lot. There we see the pass right from Roman. Again, not finding any lands. And then, of course, uh, Yoon is going to start making those 1-1 one, one Wasps. And, I mean, this must be so frustrating here for, for Roman. I mean, he's put Yoon on 5. Um, with so little mana, he was doing quite well. Finally finds a mountain. And then Yoon finds, a, you know, the strip mine. And that's just very frustrating. And now, of course, uh, you know, Roman has to start tapping down these 1-1 one, one little, little Wasp creatures. That's not what you want to do. Looks like he's going to tap four. What are we going to see? Oh, an Orcish Oriflame. Orcish Oriflame, the Hive, man. That is impressive stuff. Or Orcish Oriflame, plus one, plus O oh, to attacking creatures. Wow, this is uh, this is pretty cool from Yun Edek here. Now, do remember, if... Um, you know, if Yun Edek wins this game, he wins the match. I mean, he will advance to the finals, right? Which actually, when I when I looked at both lists, I, I was pretty impressed by Roman's deck. But of course, uh, you know, luck plays a big role. Roman being quite unlucky here in game two. He has found a mountain now, though. I mean, if he's got a shatter, you know, he can just kill the, kill the hive at least and move on from there. Tapping four. Okay, there's a disintegrate. Okay, so he's gonna... Oh, Blue Elemental Blast, though. I wouldn't say he's gonna put you in Edicon 2, probably, but there's a Blue Elemental Blast. Oh, man, that is uh, that makes all the difference again here. The The only little silver lining on this very dark cloud for Roman is that at least you and didn't have enough mana open to make a second Wasp. Oh, but of course he can attack because Roman tapped out. Oh, yuck. So he's gonna take two points of damage. He's on 12. We see a maze being played out by Yoon Edik, by the way, before he passed the turn. Tapping again. Okay, there's a steel artifact. Okay, this is good. He's going to steal the hive. This is pretty problematic for Yoon Edik now. And of course, he's acting like, oh, you want to get my wasp? I guess Yoon Edik can now tap it still to make a 1-1 wasp. 
He's not doing that. I'm a little bit surprised. Perhaps he forgot. Because I think he had the mana open. Could have made a 1-1 one, one Wasp. There's an Evan Earl's disc. Okay, so he's probably going to reset the board here. Again, attacking Roman being tapped out. So that means uh, Roman's now on 10. And remember, Roman doesn't even have enough mana to use the Hive. It looked like you and Edic wanted to play something out. Maybe it was a land. So the Nevenerals disc is probably going to clear the board next turn. Roman on 10 and Yoon Edic still on uh, 5. Very exciting game number 2. In general, the matches are quite nice between these two decks. Roman tapping for... Oh, there's an Earthquake! <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Earthquake by Roman. So that's going to put Yoon Edic on 2, but also Roman on 7. And um, then there's a situation where Yoon Edic can also attack with the Wasp that he still has. So he's going to put Roman on 5. I mean, this is, this is quite a risky play here by Roman. One of the things that he, that he could have done, I guess it's easier when you look back at these matches, right? Um is kind of keep the the uh, the earthquake in hand and just pass the turn, assuming that the Dune Edic is going to use the uh, the disc, you know, because then you don't take the two damage from the wasp, I guess, because you can still tap it down with the icy, and after that, Dune Edic's probably going to pop the disc, and then uh, after that, Roman could have played the um, the earthquake, but okay. Anyway, there's the attack. Roman going to drop to five. Is Yoon Edic going to pop the disc? That's the question. It looks like he isn't sure. He's like, I'm not sure if I want to do that right now. I mean, he can wait. Oh, he's going to wait. He's going to play a Phantom Monster instead. The 3-3 three, three Flyer for 4 mana. 1 blue and 3. And it's really good right now. Because Roman only has 1 IC. He doesn't have enough mana to make a Wasp token yet. Remember that Steel Artifact has stolen the Hive from Yoon Edic. There's a fireball. Oh, he's going to win it with the fireball. Does he have any counter magic? I mean, then that earthquake makes perfect sense that Roman played earlier because, you know, you just want to have that turn. It looks like he's going to make it here. Yep, he's going to win game number two because of that fireball. Wow, 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 wow. And I'm taking it, I'm taking it all back, Roman. Now the earthquake made sense because you had that fireball in hand. So you were calculating. Makes absolute sense. That you, that you did that earlier. And uh, man, it's a 1-1. One, one. I'm happy because it means we are going to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. The all deciding game. The winner will advance to the finals of the Highlander tournament, man. And so many cool games. And I have to say, man, Roman, winning that, uh, that second game with just having hardly any lands that was quite impressive anyway you and Edic here playing a mountain passing your turn Roman doing the same here in his second turn both players haven't played out anything yet he's gonna have to wait and see of course uh I, I guess both players do have quite a more controlling deck than an aggressive deck you and here playing a second mountain passing to turn back to Roman no granite gargoyle for example here for uh for you Edic. there is a granite gargoyle for Roman though 2-2 flyer Pay one red, give it plus O plus one. So this is quite nice for Roman. There is a card for you in Edic to control magic. Okay, wow, we've seen control magic and steel artifact doing a lot of work in uh, in these matches thus far. And this is really good here for you in Edic taking the gargoyle of Roman. There is another land here. Roman finding a second mountain into Felwer Stone, passing the turn. So that means that you. Can start swinging in with the Gargoyle. Probably going to put Roman here on uh, 18. First, of course, drawing a card for turn. There's another land. It's a Volcanic attacking here. Roman on 18 now. Going to tap 4, it seems. Still a lot of glitches on the line on the side of uh, Unitic, But we're just going to pull through, right? There's a Dragon Whelp. That is really good here for uh, for Unitic. That's, that's a problem for Roman. Next turn, he could potentially swing in for 7 points of damage. Put... Roman on 11. Look at this. Roman just playing land passing turn. This is really bad for him. Needs like a control magic or a Shivan dragon or a Mahamoti. Like needs something big here. Let's first see what June Edic can do. I mean, he could just swing in here, you know, pump up the whelp. 
deal 7 points of damage, put Roman on 11. That's exactly what's going to happen here. So Roman dropping to 11. 3 blue open still for Yoon. Going to tap a blue. What is it going to be? There's a mana vault. Is he going to use the vault? That's the question. He is tapping again with those fingers. Does it mean that something's coming? Probably thinking about, do I want to tap the vault to play out something big? Nope, just passing to turn three cards in hand for Unatic. Roman really has to come up with something. Now he's on 11. If he just passes to turn again, he's going to take seven more points. That's not really an option for him. There's a steel artifact. Not the worst and not the greatest. One of the things that Unaira could have done here is tap the Vault. Now remember, this is a format with the Mana Burn, so he would have dealt three points of damage to himself, but still, it would have been an option. I mean, this is looking great for Unaidic, right? The only thing that Roman could do was play the Steel Artifact. That means that he can attack again, you know, pump up the Whelp, gonna swing in for seven. Probably Unaidic also has a choice to play something out. So he's got to find that balance between, you know, attacking and pumping the Whelp, and of course, trying to keep mana left over to play something out. But it must be so tempting to just pump the Whelp to full five. That means that if Roman takes seven, you know, he would drop to four. But let's first wait and see what Unadix is going to do. Only going to pump it twice. He's going to deal six damage. Roman on five. Probably means that Unadix has another play to make here in his second main. He's going to tap some blue. Ooh, there's a steel artifact. He's going to steal back. <laughs> that is funny. Of course, Roman can respond to this. I mean, I think this is just kind of a, a sub-battle, you know, a battle in the sidelines that is not going to matter that much. I mean, the real problem here is the Dragon Whelp and the second problem is the Gargoyle. But, you know, maybe if you're Roman, you want to counter this if you have a counter spell, because why not? But, I mean, he, again, Roman can tap it, you know, in response, but then he's going to deal three damage to himself and he's on five, so I wouldn't really do that. You know, he would drop to, uh, to two. So Roman really needs an answer here to uh, the Flyers, preferably the Dragon Whelp. Actually, he needs an answer to the Dragon Whelp because he's on five. Control Magic would be quite good here. He could steal the Whelp. I mean, Chain Lightning would be great, you know, and Lightning Bolt. There are a lot of cards that Roman can have here that can ex uh, actually at least give him one more turn. Remember, Unitic is tapped out, so he doesn't have to worry about Counter Magic. This is very, very exciting here. If Roman just passes the turn, he's dead, right? Oh, there's an earthquake. So he's going to kill himself here. Look at his hand. Counterspell, power sink, double blue. Nothing he can do against it. Man, this was a quick, a quick uh, game number three, by the way. But we do have our first finalist. Unitic will be going to the finals of the Highlander Online Tournament 93-94. Congratulations, Unitic. And Yoon Edic will play the finals against Dave and his deck, UBR Red on Steroids. So it also plays blue and red, but he has played, uh, or he is playing black as well. So he's playing three colors. I think that's so cool. And I mean, he's made it all the way to the finals as well. So this is going to be a very exciting matchup, you know. I mean, UBR Red on Steroids versus UR Surprises. And next week, we will know who is uh, who is the winner, who is the champion of Highlander 93-94 right here on Timmy Talks. Now, if you don't want to miss that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you for doing that. And if you're already a subscriber, great. Thank you for watching Timmy Talks. Please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is become a patron of the show via Patreon dot com slash timmy talks and it is a way to kind of uh, support the channel financially as well it already starts with just one dollar and for that dollar you get access to the timmy talks discord you can participate in these online events and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll what end scroll this end scroll what shall we do with the
Bumba Kazik! <laughs> <laughs>